My name is Frank. I'm an expert witness. I've been doing this work for about 27 years. I am going to teach you everything I know about giving testimony in five minutes. You're all going to be expert witnesses in five minutes, believe it or not. Go back and raise your billing rates. Now, what are judges looking for in an expert witness? They're looking for a little bit of gray hair to show that you have some experience and maturity. They're looking for a little bit of a punch to show that you're financially successful. <laughs> and they're looking for a slight case of hemorrhoids to, to show you care. So if, once you have those three things, you're ready to go. Now, there's a couple of differences between giving testimony in deposition and giving testimony at trial. The, heads up, you're probably going to lose or win your case in deposition. So keep that in mind. We're going to go over some tools that you can use. What's a deposition? It's a fishing expedition. The other side in a litigation case is trying to find out everything there is about you and what you did in your report. They want to know who you talked to, what references you have looked at, uh, what industry experience you have. But most important, what they're really looking for is what you didn't do. What you didn't do. That procedure you missed. Because what you didn't do means what you don't know, which could really affect the credibility at trial. So this is really what's going on. Where does the deposition take place? It doesn't take place in court. It takes place in a conference room. You're on one side, your client, your attorney. The other side's there. They may have the other expert there to intimidate you sitting across from you. There's a court reporter on that end seat taking down every word you say. But there's someone that's missing in that room. And that person is the most important person in the legal proceeding. And that's the judge. The judge isn't there. And because the judge isn't there, that gives you a powerful tool. And that tool is you control the clock. You control the pace of your deposition. They can't ask you question number two until you answer question number one. Now, that sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? But for CPAs, that's a problem for us. Why? Well, to be quite honest, we don't get out much. <laughs> we, don't, we don't get invited to cocktail parties. And I'm not referring to you personally. It's the person to the right of you. <laughs> So what do we do? What do we do as CPAs when we get into a deposition? All eyes and ears are on us. We blab. We talk, and we talk, and we talk. We're paid. People pay us for our opinions, right? So that's what we do. We get into a deposition, and we yak, 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 yak. And why? Because we think we are going to what? Persuade the other side that what we did was true, honorable, and correct. Our report is flawless. They should just. Settle the case right there, right? Right, Cindy? Yes, absolutely. This is not the moment. A deposition is not the time to be trying to persuade anybody. This is not the moment for your I have a dream speech. <laughs> this is not it. You do this later, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. A deposition, your side already loves you. The other side already hates you. That's not going to change. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do in a deposition? Here's where you control the clock. You repeat the question quietly in your head. Repeat the question slowly in your head. That gives your attorney an opportunity to object. And guess what? They may not be asking you a question. They could be making a statement, trying to elicit an emotional response from you to give them more information. Yes. they're. There are nasty attorneys out there that will do this. OK, so let me give you some examples. Mr. Pankow, you must have been surprised when the documents were delayed. What do I say to that in a deposition? Nothing. It's not a question. That's a very nice tie you're wearing. What do I say in deposition? Nothing. That's not a question. Is it red? What do I say? Yes. One word answer, yes. See the difference? Now, some attorneys will take a bunch of hypotheticals, and they'll string them all together for you, and then they'll plop a question at the end of it, and then they want you to answer it. What do you do there? Nothing. What do you do after you answer a question in the deposition? You shut up. <laughs> you shut up. Let the silence fill the room. You control the clock. Now, that might be hard for some of us to do. So when you go to trial, what do you do? Everything I just told you gets thrown completely out the window. Forget it. Now you're there to persuade. Now you're there in front of the judge, and you're going to tell him or her why your report is so fantastic and why you're so experienced and good at what you do. This is that moment. So in depositions, short answers. Just the facts, ma'am, as Jack Webb used to say. At trial, you try to give out your entire story. So if the question comes up at deposition, is that a red tie you're wearing, what do you say? Yes. If that question comes up at trial, how am I going to answer? Yes. yes. It's, it's my favorite red tie. I have four more just like it. This, this red tie was given to me as a gift two years ago. So do you see the difference? 
So in deposition, you keep it short. In trial, you tell your story. Now, this is a blatant plug for my book that's coming out next month, so I just had to get that in there. But that's now you're all expert witnesses. Thank <laughs> you.